Welcome, welcome, people. It's your boy Q from Qda Productions. And today's topic is going to be on the, using the note repeat function inside of Logic Pro X. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to Option K. Option K is going to bring up your, com your key commands tab. Uh, type in uh, note. And it should come up somewhere around here where it will actually show you uh, the note repeat and I have made shift and the number one as my key command or or key assignment to bring it up so if I go back to this screen and I go shift one and this box comes up now normally it will come up like this uh, all you have to do is just hit the little drop down it'll open it back up and I see a lot of people that do tutorials on the actual function of this box but one thing they do not talk about is the fact that you can take some of these uh, these values away if you don't want them not only can you do that but you can also move these to wherever you want those key commands to be because the way this function is, is you have to hit one of the keys here it's almost like a key switching if you were making like orchestral type of music or something like that so you'd have to hit the actual function of what you want the value to be here and then from here which will be c2 further up to c8 wherever you want to actually play your notes from then you would do it um basically two-handed so your left hand would be changing the values and your other hand would be just holding down the key and it's automatically going to record it's going to record within quantize so you're good to go for any hi-hats that you want to do hi-hat rolls so um to add on to that if i wanted to use the rest of these then naturally you're going to need a, a a different size keyboard so that you're able to go in and change those up as you need to if you are right-handed and you want to actually maneuver the values faster or more efficiently because you're right-handed then you can take this and move it further up to wherever you know key range that you wanted to as well as you can make this smaller so that you only use the values that you would normally use you can always go back and add these in if you want later and it'll still lay on top of it depending on how you have your recording set up if it's overdub or uh, destruct as you go however you have that set up then you can actually record over what you already have recorded and it should fill in fine i haven't changed any of these velocity parameters or the gate or anything like that i left all that the same i didn't need to change any of this uh, another way that you can switch these if you don't want to do it the key method is to actually use the modulation wheel and you can move the wheel to different spots and it'll change that for you if i happen to move my wheel you can see that it's actually changing that value up here depending on what i have it set for or where i want it at so that's not a function that I would use. I don't particularly like to use my my wheel that way. I'm just not that coordinated with that. So I don't use it that way. I just do it with the key functions here. This is a simple little eight bar loop that I came up with. Just something to kind of demonstrate what you can do with the hi-hat uh, note repeat in Logic. And I'm going to play it and then I'm going to go back and then actually do the hi-hats again. I'll just do them some other type of way using the, the note repeat function. So just something simple just to kind of show what you can do with it so what we're going to do is take this move this out of the way and i will let that run i'm going to hit my shift one to bring up my note repeat as a word of advice the one thing that this doesn't show you is it doesn't show you the keys that you're actually pressing as you go but if you look at it if you look at it there is a pattern every c note is hundred dollars now every C note is actually a quarter note and it the next value up will be your um, your triplets so C is always one quarter note and C2 would be um, a quarter note triplet and so on and so forth so you can kind of see 
how that it, it progresses up. So uh, I am going to go ahead and do this with this particular section right here. I'm going to let it play and then I'll actually start to play something starting with uh, 16 notes. So I'm going to hit E with my left hand since that is where my 16th note is sitting. And then I'm going to switch between the 16th, the 32nd, back to 16th. And I may do uh, 64, so 128 is one of the two. And then go back and forth. I'm only going to do it for this section, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, and when you get done with it, it will sound um, because you're not in the exact key that you would normally record it in, which is fine. All you have to do is just go into it. Uh, it's already going to be quantized and set up for you. So all you have to do is take that and then either move it up or down to wherever, you know, whatever key you want it in. <laughs> And obviously there's some spots in there that I could go in and clean up, but uh, it's a faster way to put it down for sure, an easier way to put it down. And that's what we want is efficiency where we can actually go in and do things faster. You know, we want to get the idea out of our head and, you know, onto the computer. So that's my time. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video helped you work more efficiently to get your ideas from your head and into the computer. Make sure you like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notifications button. And most of all, stay queued up. Peace.